Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create uh, this simple shader which will it should help you uh, to create uh, these background objects. As you can see there are uh, some pines in the distance. They have blue tint and they have the low contrast uh, and the brightness is slightly changed. So uh, what I was looking for, I well, I was working on my game Skelly, and I wanted to cr quickly create those well, such background objects like like you can see here, and I didn't want to draw uh, the separate images just for the background. I just wanted to use uh, the trees I uh, already drawn so. I came up with this little simple shader. Uh, here you can see it mixed with the, the vertex shader to make the trees uh, sway, a little, sway a little bit. I'm going to show you how to create this uh, uh, this color changing shader. As you can see, I, I here have some pines grouped by the node 2D. All of them will use uh, their parents' material, so if you're making something similar, uh, if you're grouping uh, your objects with uh, a node 2D or... I guess uh, the node can be of any type. Uh, be sure to uh, check this checkbox use parent material. And then you can apply the material to, to the grouping node and all of the children will have the same material. Sometimes it, it can, can be handy, sometimes you want to have separate values for every object, so be sure you have this in, on your mind. Okay, so I've created the material for my background grouping node. I've added a new shader and let's let's write it down. Uh, so shader type it will be canvas item. Okay. We will need some uh, Variable variables so that will be exported. So let's set the uniform form uh, values. So first will be wake four. It will be tint tint, and it will be the color you will be setting to your images to your textures. This uh, this color should be in this case. Uh, this color should be uh, similar to the average. Mm, I don't know how to say it, to the average color of your background. So if you have a bluish background as I have here, bluish grayish, then the tint should be uh, also the blue bluish grayish color. Next, we will need something, some uh, variable for the brightness and the contrast. It will be float. Set the brightness default value to zero. Float contrast. We will also one and we will also need to have some variable uh, for the tint to set its uh, the amount of of this tint color in the um, on the texture of of your object so let's set it 
also here it will be tint I don't know maybe value and default value is zero uh, so at start we have those default values so nothing will change next in void fragment function we will copy the the current current texture of and texture of the the object so will be vec4 color texture and uv so now in color we have the texture of of current object now we can uh, Let's, well, let's set the output color to our color. As you can see, nothing changed. Now let's add uh, contrast. It's done by mixing the gray color. So this vector four. Uh, 0 0.5 uh, is actually gray color it will just something like vec4 like 05 05 so this is the gray color we want to mix it with our uh, with our current color RGB by the uh, with the amount of uh, contrast. Nothing has changed, and so that's uh, good. Very similar thing will be with the brightness. But this time we'll miss, we'll, we are mixing the current uh, pixel color of our texture with uh, black color. Mm, next uh, we will apply the tint to our color. So also mix tint. No. Tint by the tint value. nothing has changed and that's good this time so let's check the parameters and see how it's working when we set some values so as I said let's take the blue tint come on where is it? Uh, tint value and there's something wrong as you can see uh, this color uh, this tint is being applied to the whole texture uh, no matter if it's there's alpha there's some there is alpha value greater than zero or no it's applied to the whole uh, texture so what we need to do is uh, set the condition if color alpha value is not equal to zero then make those changes and that's it so now uh, all you have to do is to uh, set appropriate values something like that and we have the mm, the tint on, on our trees 
now I can duplicate this. No, not. I hate that when that happens. So I duplicated the the trees over here. I need to make the material unique. I can change only those trees over here. I will also move them a little bit to make some variation. And let's revert those uh, settings. And maybe we will increase the comp a little bit. Decrease the brightness. Add slight tint. What I think I will do is I will just scale, scale this negative X. Move those here. And I can duplicate them again. Create, make this material unique. Actually, I can just remove the remove the the material from from this. Rename this as uh, foreground lines and this is how it looks quite nice actually and by adding some other effects as particles, slides, some add some fog, clouds and yeah I think this looks quite nice it's uh, very convenient shader to use for creating background. Yeah. I hope you liked it. Mm, if you have any questions, uh, please do ask. I will try my best to answer them. But I'm not the expert on shaders. This is actually one of very few shaders I've made. Okay, so see you next time. Bye.